Belmont Marauders versus Algonquin. Uh, my name is David Hamer. I'm here with Charlie Conroy. Evening, Charlie. Good evening, David. Thanks uh, for the introduction there, and welcome, everybody. This is a, a beautiful evening tonight, David. It I is. think it's summertime here in Belmont right summertime. now. Summertime, 80. It's got to be, got to be 80. Uh, yeah, what a lovely evening. And as ever, Belmont is served by Belmont Media. Jeremy Misserve is here on the camera, getting better with every game. And uh, it's Algonquin with the kickoff. And as normal, we'll, we'll read through some of the rules as, as, as play happens, and we'll also try to mention at least all the players on the field, barring our own uh, pronunciation, so please forgive us. Charlie, absolutely, what a lovely evening. So Alex Townsend, the first Belmont player with the ball, charging up the field. I think, right, Belmont are playing in the blue tonight and uh, Algonquin in the white, right? So yes. Belmont received the kickoff there and um, seems like there was a bit of a knock forward, right? So the player carrying the ball seemed to knock it forward. Yes, in the, in the tackle. So uh, that's uh, a scrum with the ball going to Algonquin. Am I saying that right? Do you think Algonquin? I think so. I think it is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the first scrum. Good position. Let, let me just read through the, uh, the team here. So for Belmont today, we have starting out in the front row of the scrum. We have Shea Bradley Hurley with Kelsey Donaldson playing number two. And then Tabby Kambaza is, is the other prop. In our second row, we have Sally Amer and Roan Dargan starting. And then in the back row, we have Sage Tanamura McDonald, Alex Townsend playing wing forwards, and then Lulu Conroy at number eight. They're serviced at the scrum half by Shelby Ball with Lucy Cabral starting at, at fly half. And in the centers we have Liv Mann and Claire Hotyek with Ali Caputo and Ella Oram on the wings with the fullback as Mia Taylor. So a great strong starting lineup there for Belmont as, as play gets underway. Fantastic. There's still only, uh, only one, not many seniors in that team. Great, so okay. Algonquin plowing forward here. Their wing forward, number seven, is the uh, Julia. Great th driving run there with the ball. They fed it back, recycled it very nicely back. Very tight play here from Algonquin, right? Quick recycle, quick ball, pick and run. Yeah. You were explaining phases last week, David. I think this is a great example of phases, right? Multiple. Yeah, this must be uh, at least half a dozen. Each phase uh, being, the, as you just saw there, recycling the ball to start again another attack. Great tackle there. Oh. Oh. Okay, so, yeah. Thought so. Perhaps uh, Alex Townsend then off her feet probably just uh, either slipped or tripped and was seen to go over the top of the ball. So stopping the ball's release to Algonquin then is enough for a penalty to the uh, defending team. Oh. Alex Townsend nearly <laughs> stealing the ball then. <laughs> that was a great and tackle by yeah. Alex. She's all over the place tonight. <laughs> Already two minutes in and she's having a blinder. So she's having a great game. But it's good, Algonquin are keeping hold of the ball. Oh, and that was the, do they call that a commentator's curse? <laughs> well, there's a counter, so there's advantage nice. here now to Belmont. Yeah, so that was picked up by uh, Kelsey Donaldson there, at number two. Lulu Conroy with a charge. So the okay. referee's arm is out, saying it's still advantage, is still being played. He may pull it back for a scrum or because of the knock-on, but no, it looks like they're gonna continue playing. Shelby digs it out there. Oh, well, nice good pass, and there's Ali Caputo. She's got, she's gonna go through, what a turn. That's a great score. Wow. Ali Caputo, what a great score. 
Yeah, she really did a nice little turn on the inside there to beat her player and uh, yes. then accelerated out of that. Very good play. That was great. So uh, quick play there from Beaumont as well to spy the gap on the outside. As Charlie said, they were still playing advantage, so sometimes that plays into people's minds, both defending and, and attacking at that point. So the referee can give, uh, I mean, a reasonable amount of time for an advantage to be gained by the uh, team with the ball if there was an offence that wasn't... Uh, a penalty-worthy offence. Well, it could be a penalty, actually, Charlie, yeah. If there wasn't a, if there an offence earlier that didn't mean you had to stop the game, they can play advantage. So anyway, there Belmont did gain the advantage, and uh, with the conversion, that's two extra points, so seven points to Belmont. She got that kick, right? Yeah, Lucy Cabral, she got that kick right through the post there. Another very uh, very solid kick right through. She had a great game that's last right. week she kicking, was kicking, didn't she? Yes, Super from, last the, uh, week. from out wide. You know, what I really liked about that passage of play by the Belmont team, they demonstrated a lot of quick movement of the ball. They recovered it. They moved forward, recycled, passed out, recycled, got it out to the wings quickly, and then Ali Caputo did her magic streaming down the side. So great, great work. Very much so, yeah. Okay, uh, we have a, a sub, perhaps, uh, yeah, blood sub I think at the moment so that's uh, going off is Sally Sally Amir and on in her place is Abby Hill possibly just till some uh, blood from a nose injury looks uh, to be is cleared up Belmont again with the ball having received the kickoff from Algonquin and here is uh, Abby on the ball but the ref or, yeah. forward pass, so uh, it's pretty good. You can uh, see, folks, uh, the signaling from the referee tells uh, everybody that wasn't always the way, but now uh, very clear the ref's uh, signaling uh, what the infringement was for, so that's uh, passing the ball forward. Should we go through a couple of the uh, Algonquin squad? Yes, that's uh, the, in, the, in number order. So the uh, front row, um, so uh, now opposite the Belmont uh, players in that scrum, are uh, Anna Belleville and uh, Annalise Greenrich and I think Grace Herdman. We'll run through the rest of the team uh, later on. Good tackle. So I think we, there's this concept of the gain line, right? So it's kind of when the ball, like right now, we're here in the middle of the field. Well, Belmont's stolen the ball. Belmont's stolen the ball, but there's uh, this concept of um, rucking the ball and moving it forward over the gain line, which is this imaginary line of where the ball stops and the attacking team try and always move it past that. And we saw some great defensive play by Belmont where they were able to put the tackles in to prevent the team moving over the game line. So actually moving them backwards in the play. So yeah, no, I, some strong so stuff. Absolutely. And the, and the teams feel that momentum, don't they? If you uh, manage to put the team back, the defensive coaches are telling the players not to la let the attacking team to cross the game line. And uh, likewise, the attacking team trying always to, to gain that advantage. In doing so then, there was a knock-on by Algonquin, so uh, that's a scrummage down. So the rest of the pack for Algonquin. Uh, number four, so the second row is uh, Becca Brito Correa. Number five is, we're looking here up and down a team sheet which is not in number order, so uh, you'll have to I can't see a number five, so there might be somebody else went down there. Number seven, so at the back of the scrum is Julia Barreto. Sarah Caldwell playing eight. And Abby Dreyer, the other, the other wing forward. So that's the pack. Lulu Comrie with a 
break there. So that's the gain line there, Charlie. Oh, okay. So a penalty to Belmont. That's uh, Gun Quinn going over the top there, his signal. So he, a player was preventing the ball from being released to Belmont. So now it's a penalty. Belmont choosing to take the tap penalty here. So you can you have a number of oh. choices. Oh, good break. That is Kelsey. Kelsey, great, yeah. great run. And she's held on well, giving her ta te her team time yes. to catch up to her. Yes. Nice ball. Oh, there's an overlap here if they can get it out. Ooh. Oh, well stolen. Good, stole. good steal, yeah. That was a good pass was, there by... Was uh, Anna. Was that Anna there, number one on the... Uh, yes, it was on the Algonquin team who did a great steal in the ruck there. Um, or in the mall, I should say, in the tackle, really. She stole the ball, ripped it right out of the Belmont player. Yep. And uh, this is a line-out uh, to Belmont. We saw there the Algonquin player put their foot into touch, so it doesn't really matter what happens to the ball. The ball can be way inside the line, but if... Uh, if a player who is holding the ball touches that line, then it's a, it's a line out, a throw in to Belmont. <coughs> the backs for Algonquin are number nine, scrum half Ava Lefebvre. Number 10, the fly half is Eleni Chacarone. Wingers, Clarabelle Elderman. And Lee Gould is the other winger, number 14. Speaking yes. of 14, oh. good score from Belmont. That was Ella, Ella Oram. You know, I, I think, David, this was a super move, and maybe, you know, it was important to watch Lucy Cabral there. So she took the ball. Um, from Shelby at number 10, got it out to Liv, I think it was either Liv or Claire in the center, but looped around them and then took it again, creating the extra space, and she straightened the line, burst right through, and opened it up out to her other. It was a super move, well orchestrated. It's something they probably do 20 times on the practice field every session, and uh, they really executed it well there. So. That is fantastic. And it's it's great to see the reemergence of the loop, Charlie. Yes. It went out of favor for a few <laughs> years. It certainly did, but it is tried and trusted. Uh, <laughs> it has survived the generations. <laughs> did you ever score a try on the loop, David? You used to play for oh, half. Let's not talk it's about. <laughs> let's not. Anyway, unfortunately, Lucy doesn't make the conversion, but she made the try. And uh, so that's now another five points. So that's uh, 12 12 now. We have some uh, we have some ducks on the field as well, Charlie. Just down there, look on the 25-yard uh, line. Rugby is definitely growing in popularity when the animals want to play too, right? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think it's all uh, Coach McCabe. She yeah. does a great job, and uh, she brings uh, she brings she brings the team to the field every week. So she's she's doing a great job getting the interest here in the school. Oh gosh, yeah, for sure. And uh, the ducks were chased away in the end by Val, who is. Uh, club captain of the team, unfortunately injured. Uh, you, some of you, if you listened last week, heard from her just after halftime. And uh, Belmont again with the ball, making a strong break. I think that is, that's Kelsey again, I think, who seems to take the ball a lot up the front. Number five. That's Rowan, right? Rowan, yes, and Rowan. That's Liv. Oh. Here's the counter rug happening. Oh, no, but they didn't yeah. quite. Ma oh. Good tackle. So that's Tabby. It's tabby yeah, yeah with driving a, forward. It was lovely to see her look up there and see what her options were and think about it a little bit before she actually made a move and made sure her support was with her as well. Right. And again, crossed the gain line, made the yardage, team moving forward, momentum continues. Alex, Alex she's going to go. Oh, she's going to go for it. She's got a pass open now. Oh, 
There we go. I think the yeah, ref's going to call that. Back, I think. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, a forward pass was it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It did look a little, uh, a little forward. I mean, he was perfectly placed, the ref. So. Galax held on to it just for a minute, just a second too long, right? Um, it was a great break forward, though. No try, no try. No try. Still 12. Yep. Some of the. Uh, so it's, uh, you can see the uh, touches there waving. One thing, Charlie, we haven't covered in these last couple of games is this uh, five meter rule. So um, this is a great angle to see it from. But from that scrummage, uh, the back foot, the, pl the other players who aren't involved in scrummage have to be five meters behind that back foot just to give enough play, uh, a room for players to, uh, to attack um, that famous gain line. Lucy Cabral with the ball. Nice take by Lucy. It's Abby Hill taking the ball in. It's Rowan there. Yeah. She's a big Good break. break. Keep going, Rowan. She's going to go. Oh. Oh. That will be great for her. What a score. She'll be made up. Wow, that's a great score. You know, as somebody who played in the pack in their younger day, and the, you, you do a lot of work and don't usually get a lot of credit. So I think when you see one of the, the engine room, as they call the two second rows, when you see them breaking through, getting a score, it definitely brings a lot of joy to <laughs> this guy's heart to see them getting the credit they deserve. Oh, so uh, uh, good on your own and, and enjoy that moment. Probably no one understands a word I'm saying here, but that's okay, right? <laughs> Lucy with great, job. great kick. Yeah, that is pretty inspiring kicking from Lucy. She's uh, obviously uh, keen on uh, soccer as well. It probably helps. Like Sally's back on from that, um, and is that meaning that Abby is coming off there? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So Abby is off. So she's uh, done a stint. No doubt we'll see some more of her and plenty of the other players who are currently on the sidelines in a minute. So uh, but that blood has now been uh, cleaned up. Kick now from Gunquin. Picked up by Mia Taylor. Who... Oh, he's looking for support. Alex Townsend is there. Who would have thought anybody different, really? So, a gun Quinn, though, unfortunately, steal that ball. So what a great run by Mia. Just ran out of, uh, ran out of uh, supporting players at that point. So, a gun Quinn, what can they do from here? Oh, great counter rooking by Belmont. Yes. But a gun Quinn has the ball. Just with Algonquin getting getting the ball out from there in a in a quick fashion is the difference between the teams at the moment. I had to hear all the shouting out there, the girls. Players are shouting. Okay, penalty, so offside. So that's the first offside penalty we've seen today. The ref uh, signaling that uh, Belmont players were encroaching. They have to stay behind. Oh. Typically the back foot of whatever ruck or maul has been formed. Nice. Picked Great, whoever Roman. that was there, yeah. There you go, Great. Tabby, just moving forward. It's right in front of us here, digging it out. Yes. Sally oh, nice. to Kelsey. Kelsey. That was intelligent player because Sally 
you know, had an There's opportunity an just to run straight forward. Yes, and she noticed there was a gap outside. So that's the other prop. Is that Shane? Yep. Good tabby. Is going to be, yeah. Uh, I think she was playing the ball on the ground in the end. I think, yeah, holding on the referee's signal. So, once you go to ground, right, you're required to release the ball. So, you can turn on the ground and put the ball back on your favor on your side, but you cannot hold on to it to prevent the opposition from. Uh, from picking it up. So it's a very hard thing to do in the moment, right? You're trying yes. to protect the ball for your team. Um, but it's a great skill. The kid, these, these, these players are learning it every week. We see uh, lots of examples when they're doing it right. So this is, uh, this is great. Oh, oh and okay. stolen the ball. Great steal by um, Sage there. Really great. Liv running up the field. Ball recycled so quick. Ooh. That's good. That's number that six, right? That's Sage, I think. Is that? Yes. Great recycling again. So this is now the sixth phase just of this play. So play is a oh, bit stolen. So that ball was uh, trickled out the back there. And as soon as the ball is out of that rock, in, in, that, in that case, then uh, the opposition can, can, bounce, uh, can pounce on the ball, as they did. Just uh, 20 minutes gone, so I think, uh, yeah, knock on there. What's the format of the game tonight, right? It's a larger squad. I think it's uh, an opportunity to bring more players in uh, through the night, you know? I, or think, uh, I, I think so. I think uh, someone was telling me about the, the email that we all get each week saying that there may be some uh, more frequent changes in this in this game to give every, lots of players, but on both teams, an opportunity uh, to play for some people on, on both sides. It might be the first time they've played for the uh, first 15. Which is great. And actually, given the heat tonight as well, that probably yes. works to their advantage also. Just to Yeah, Lulu Conroy with the pick up at the back. And, oh, oh good, good tackle. tackle. Okay, the ball's back. Oh, there's a player down. Okay, and now nicely played. That was good. That was good play that they got it to the player in space. Somebody could have tried to go for it, but they uh, made the ball do the work in the opposition and then uh, ended up with a try for... Was that Liv? Olivia Mann, yeah. yeah. So Liv Mann got, the, got on the score. So we've had uh, three different scorers so far. Four different scorers, right, Charlie? Yes. yes. Yeah. That's uh, that's always good. And Lucy, uh, again, with the extras, or the possibility of the extras. 23 minutes gone, so it'll be 35-minute halves today. Lovely kick again. Good, another two points. to deal with the, there is a player down from the Algonquin side, so play will just wait for a few minutes. Hopefully she is okay. It's good to see her up on her feet, but she may have got a knock on the head or something. She mm. is being helped off, so she looks like her it evening is, could uh, be done. I think it is a leg. A leg, a right, she's limping. Oh, time stopped. Hard to say. Yep, just uh, 
Well, he doesn't have to stop for an injured player. This, uh, this player was down for a little time before the... Uh, before the play was stopped, which is, which is okay, as long as uh, it's nothing uh, too serious. I'll tell you who that is uh, going off. I, I realize as well there were two other players we, I missed earlier on. The centers for Ogonquin are, I'll find them on my list here, are number 13 is Adriana Russell. And there should be a number 12 on here. Yes, is Taylor Doyne. Doyne. So Ogonquin with a kick and Lucy Cabral with a great take. It just stayed backwards there yeah, all the time, so that was good. They were lucky. <clears throat> That's great. The speed is very telling. That putting the ball down on the ground, rucking over, and then the scrum half getting the chance to get the ball out is definite difference between oh, the teams. Really, really strong. Here's Rowan again. Go on. Oh, good Great. tackle by 15. And some support there. Good. That is great. Maybe back to Lucy. Back to uh, Mia. Back inside to, to Ali. Ali Caputo is through. through. Okay, so now there's two tries to one play. Ali Caputo. If not, it was uh, the scores. Uh, there's five scores now to Belmont. That's the score at 31. 31 with uh, the possibility of another two here from Belmont. So, uh, I don't know if you, if we noticed on that play, like, so I was, I was going to say as the play was, was unfolding that, you know, when you see the ruck form and then there's just a line of players out, it's very organized. Like every player is on, in a specific position in that line yes. for a very specific reason. So they call it pods, and each player knows exactly where they need to be so they don't all just pile into the rook. They stay out so they know exactly where they need to be. So great strategy there. And there was a beautiful inside pass to Roan who came in at a different angle yes. to break the angle, and that created all that space for the follow-on rook. Team was up there, rooked the ball out very quickly, move into Ali Caputo and it's a score. I mean, this is really textbook stuff and uh, they practice this every day on the, on the, on the practice field and, and like they're just Comes executing to fruition. it well. Yeah, Absolutely. It's, it's just wonderful to see. It was uh, Mackenzie Wood, unfortunately, is the injured player for Algonquin and uh, I realized she was, uh, she was our missing number two that I couldn't, uh, in the missing number three, I think, that I couldn't uh, see earlier on. She's actually wearing 18, but uh, I think that's where she came from. So, Belmont again. Mia Taylor with the ball. And again. Great offload. Oh, unlucky. 15. Okay. That's Ella. That That's was Ella a great Warren, is it? Who yeah. got that? Yeah, great. That was right. a great wow. score. It's hard to catch a breath here right now. <laughs> it, it is. That was great. Mia Taylor was involved twice in that place as so she picked up the ball from the uh, from the kickoff. Ran back, uh, ran up the field, uh, was tackled, and then uh, quickly got to her feet, and then was there able to support, and then f give the offload to Ella, who stormed home. of an angled kick here for Lucy. Off her right foot. And it, oh, no, no. Just a little to the right. So she so had all the height and distance, but just not the direction on that one. So, Okay, so that score is uh, already crept up to uh, 38. Go. She missed it. 
Right, so Gong Quinn, uh, see if they're going to change it up this time. N normally, uh, teams generally just try to kick this ball deep into the opposition territory, as they did then. Lucy Cable picking the ball up. It's Tabby with the ball going in, forming the ruck. Alex cutting inside, breaking through, breaking through, oh. continuing to go, continuing to go. Now she'll form a ruck. Team is over the ball. Look at that, perfectly placed. New play, Lulu Conroy breaks the gain line. New ruck formed. Out. Knowing that there's space on the... Oh, oh great, Mia Taylor. That was a great score. It's As you said, Charlie, calling out the, the way in which that play was forming with the, the breakouts, then the support, re recycling the ball and then out to the other wing was... What a great display. I think anyone would be hard-pressed to catch Mia Taylor on a foot race, to be honest. I think... Uh, <laughs> You know, I should she think, has uh, a great burst of speed, and she's a real asset at fullback for the team. Oh she can gosh, really break yes. break through, so it's great. She was feeling probably rather left out that uh, she hadn't scored to begin with. Hopefully, Zach and Barb, mom and dad, are dad and mom are proud tonight uh, seeing her there. Uh, Okay, so that was the extra two points. Uh, so it takes us up to uh, 45 with just a couple of minutes. So the, uh, the score on the, the uh, time on the board is uh, somewhat irrelevant in rugby compared to the time being kept by the referee. So Sir in the middle will, uh, will tell us uh, when it's the end of the game. Gunquin again with the uh, kickoff. Picked up by Sage. So over halfway. Belmont so content to go through these phases, making gains every time and now an overlap. Oh, yes, oh, he's still got it. Here's Mia again. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so Mia, excellent play. There was a big overlap there from uh, the outside, which the, uh, the players noticed straight away and uh, took the ball over. Took a bounce as well, and uh, Mia gathered it up, and uh, then there was no stopping her. I think just with her speed, as we just mentioned, right, like she was able to take a wider angle around their defense and just beat them on speed. Is uh, it's that asset we were just talking about? She really uh, accelerated into that space. So I think though, like the difference here is, um, you know, as we watch it, it, it feels like there's just tackles are being missed on the Algonquin side, right, which is giving Belmont 10, 20 extra yards when they carry the ball. And then you've got the Algonquin team just trying to run backwards to all yeah. like to form the rock. All and it's a defense. very difficult uh, momentum to try and stem uh, pushback against. So, Oh, absolutely, uh, Charlie. Yeah, that dynamic is... It's, it's kind of subtle, but it's uh, but it just pays so many dividends, right? And you're seeing that in the attacking. Even when Algonquin have the ball, right, they're not really making much progress because Belmont are doing the opposite. They're, they're putting the tackles in and pushing the players back. It doesn't help Algonquin, of course, that the ball is kicked to, to yeah. Belmont each time. And so far, they've pretty well kicked it to Mia Taylor or Lucy Cable each time. So Belmont... Slightly in their own half. It's 
quick hands some, to get that out. We've got Comes some back additional in. players in now, so that uh, Chloe Ellis is now on the wing. Abby Hill is back in play. Looks like Number 17, uh, oh, Layla. Layla is on. I think she's playing at scrum half, so she's come on to replace Shelby. Number 18, uh, Gretchen. Gretchen Christensen is also on for Belmont. Gretchen. We've had a scrum for a while, Charlie. I guess Belmont's been pretty much in the ascendancy and keeping the ball in hand, and we haven't had too many. The ref's now going to... Yeah, he's going to blow for the half. Yep. So, uh, half-time. We'll be uh, back again uh, in about 10 minutes. The score is 52-0. Uh, After a bright start from Algonquin, uh, the dominance of Belmont's well-drilled machine was just too strong in that first half. So uh, Algonquin at least have the ball now because that's a Belmont kickoff. Good take in the end, Algonquin. Oh, there's some fire there. So Algonquin uh, going right to left here as you see it on the screen. And both teams, I think, have some uh, some new players on. We'll try to capture those as we go along. Algonquin trying to go through the phases, making some uh, gains over that uh, gain line now. So it looks like Abby Hill is back out, number 20 there, so she'll be on for the, the game. I see number 16, Bethany Eager is also out there, and um, I think we said earlier, number 17, Layla. Valente Patterson is out for Belmont as well. Yeah, we do. Uh, luckily, we have still have a Taylor at fullback, Charlie, but that is now Sadie Taylor, not Mia Taylor. So uh, that's pretty considerate. And uh, Agunquin here not really going very far and now dropped the ball on. So it's uh, even from that uh, passage of play, Charlie, the, the number of Agunquin players committed to supporting the the rock or mall that's formed much many many more players there than the belmont crew so that then leads either to an overlap the belmont you saw that in the first half there where agonquin have too many players or more players in the middle of the park than uh, than on the edges and uh, likewise in in defense it's very very difficult to play so first scrummage of the second half who's got the ball is it belmont putting in yeah, it should be Belmont ball, but they haven't got the ball, so uh, the referee clearly signaled it was their knock-on, and now that ball is going in from the wrong side. Right, so uh, Gunquin here with a good, uh, uh, good break there for Gunquin. Now going across the field a little bit, but they're certainly trying to go through the phases here, which is great. Oh, unlucky. Okay, so that ball has come up to Belmont. forward so two infringements there so that's good uh, that's a good uh, uh, refing been a good ref 
generally get pretty good refs. Yeah, so, very uh, good. Playing advantage there to Belmont because then, but then when Belmont knocked on the ball, um, obviously that was not then an advantage to Belmont. So uh, the referee brought us back for the original infringement was a knock on by Ogunquin. So now uh, a scrummage, this time with Belmont putting in the ball. I see number 25 there in the front row for Belmont. That's Karishma Banger. She is coming in at the tight head side of the, of the scrum. That's what they call. So the three front row positions, you have a loose head prop, a hooker who scoops the ball back, and then you have a tight head prop. And the loose and the tight head try and work off each other to keep the front row stable and the, and the scrum straight. Good break there. This is a good break. That's number 16 there. Number 16 is Lizzie Godi. Uh, she wasn't on in the first half, so she's uh, made an impact already. And Agonquin still with the ball. Picked by the number seven. That's Julia Barreto. It's a much stronger start here, isn't it, in the second half? Um, yes. And it's oh. a score. Well done. So, that is good. It was all about their ball retention, right? They kept it. They uh, held onto the ball. They formed the ruck. They got it out quickly um, and yeah. moved forward a lot more. So, yeah, no, that was uh, that was good play. Good for them and uh, good for Belmont. Now we've got a little bit of a shock after the uh, half time, and so let's see how they respond. So now there's a kick to Algonquin. The ref, uh, there we are, the ref is kindly getting the ball for the kicker. That is, and, and also suggesting perhaps where to take it from. That's, that's good. Kicking not always practice hugely. These, many of these players are, are still very new to rugby and kicking is one of the more specialist skills. And not often used, you won't see too many kicks in these games, both from the tee or uh, penalties or uh, kicks from hand, but you see in more when players are more experienced, perhaps, but that's still while players are getting used to just running with the ball and passing the ball is enough to contend with. For some of us, never master much of it. <laughs> I am firmly in that camp. Uh, <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, even when I've tried in, uh, in my more mature years, uh, <laughs> Yeah. I um I, I could never really connect properly with the ball. It's a oh, tricky thing to do. They it make is. it look so easy at times. It is kicking that ball nowadays is a struggle, right? So Belmont with the kick. So this is uh, number. I can't quite see. It looks like another number fifteen. So somebody swap shirts, I would think. I think. Uh, yes, so that's Mia Taylor's shirt now. So we're going to see some people, similar numbers in from the first half, but uh, excuse us if we uh, call the names uh, incorrectly. Yes, there's another two shirts being reused. Charlie coming on. Number five and number 11 is on, and they aren't the same players that wore them in the first half. And number so. 19 too. So I think we have... Uh, we're, we're, we're we now... Have our, we yes. have our work cut out for us to try and identify who's on the field, but <laughs> yep. we will do our best. We, we, we definitely know know who's come off, and uh, another player coming off now is Lulu Conroy. So, Belmont with the ball in attacking position, great position here. 20 yards out. Oh, but the ball has come out the tunnel straight away. The ref is going to call it back. So, um, if when that happens, uh, the ball comes either side of the tunnel, it's not hooked. Charlie described that scooping motion of the hooker, you know, to bring the ball back between their legs or, or indeed the front row's legs and then out the back of the scrum. If the ball doesn't do that and just pops out of this tunnel in between the two teams, then uh, then the ref will reform the scrum. Right, so like I was describing earlier, right, so you've number one on the left side, number three on the right, and they're the props. 
and one has got a really tight bind on number two and one is a loose and they're like fighting off they're holding each other to keep that scrum steady oh so the ball can actually so the uh, number two can lean on them to hook the ball back with their feet so it's a, a very technical very very technical role there's a lot of strength involved a lot of skill involved in uh, in binding and, and keeping yourself rock steady to keep yes. that scrum steady because it's so easy can collapse and and you know it's uh, that's not the greatest thing to see when it when it collapses because no there's a lot of force going on there with yeah. eight they got five people behind them all pushing as hard as they can the ball is now hooked pro no it came out the tunnel again so players from both teams are getting a good uh, lesson in how to scrummage here so that's good that, that ball came out of the tunnel on the uh, on the scrum half side lots of space here Charlie to the left of the scrum for for Belmont to exploit it really is it's an interesting setup here on the back they're very heavily weighted on the right side right I wonder would they try and go down the narrower side um, big wide open there I think uh, who's at the back so it looks like Abby Hills number eight so uh, she's taken over from uh, Lulu Conroy's position so we're going to see in a minute and they no they're going to go with the going to go with the uh, that's a good tackle there driving them back yes I think that's, that's Gretchen. Is that Gretchen? Yeah, I think there? that's Gretchen came in, number yeah. 18, right? Yeah. I think her number is still remain the same. Yep. Who's playing it's in the fly half now position? Do we know the out half position? Um, I it's difficult. So it looks like the number 15. So unfortunately, because she's taken on that looks like uh, Rebecca Michaud, I think. Yes, it okay. is. Okay. That's Very 15. Good. So um there we are. She's wearing uh, the 15, which is the fullback shirt. Oh, good pickup. Uh, but that is uh, that is uh, Rebecca. Nice, nice hands. Yeah, wow, that was good. And there's Gretchen Plowett breaking through, which is great. Okay. Oh. okay, so he's coming back for an infringement offside, probably. Yeah, so that's a uh, penalty to Belmont. Good passage play, good still recycling. So the, some of the players have changed, but, uh, but still the same uh, formation from Belmont. So uh, number 17, Layla, the scrum half now taking a tap penalty. Oh, no, Rebecca is, I think she's going to kick the ball. Yes, she is. Good. That's great now. Good. So uh, we've seen uh, another another option at the uh, penalty. So uh, Rebecca kicked the ball there to uh, touch. And then uh, that gives Belmont the line out now, just with uh, five meters out from the try line. So in the line out, like we, we haven't really talked about that much as a, a sort of a position of a strategy, right? You can have different numbers in that the, per the team throwing the ball in can determine the number of players they want in the line out, right? It can go to an eight person line out, a five person line out, a three person line out. And um, oh, and they're That's in. Uh, Sadie Taylor with a, with a score there. Yes, Charlie, and sometimes it's especially when we get one right in front of the uh, when we get one right in front of the camera it's lovely to see the formation of the line out so it's interesting and then so and then and again you know like uh, like we were talking earlier about the rocks that every person has an ex job to do in their in their pod in the line out there's really key key um, 
jobs as well, right? For a few of the players, you have you have maybe two or three target jumpers who are always going to be the target of the throw-in. And then you have the lifters, whose job it really is to prop the jumper up, hold them there for the ball to reach their hands and, and whip them down safely so they can return the ball to the team. And uh, again, difficult job to be focused on coordinate. Yes. Oh, very good. Rebecca got that kick. No, absolutely. The coordination and the timing, of course, involved in that play as well, right? So um, making sure that the, the, uh, the person throwing the ball in, who's typically the hooker, though not always, um, not always the hooker, um, knows where the ball is going to go to, and then the team goes into their well-rehearsed uh, plan of what to do with each line-out. So hopefully we'll see one in, just right in front of the camera and we can... Uh, we can have a look at it together. So, a gun queen now with the kickoff. It's 15 minutes, roughly 15 minutes in this half gone. Nice kickoff. Oh, it's gone over. Okay. Oh. I heard a shout of Hannah there, so if we can find out what number, that's probably a it's Hannah Jacoby, Jacoby yeah. at number five. So we're picking the pieces together here, Charlie. It's like okay. a jigsaw puzzle. It is like <laughs> a jigsaw puzzle. So uh, Hannah's on at number five. And uh, that was a knock-on, though, there from Belmont. So a scrum to a Gunquin. So a chance for them to attack here so interesting they are yes. split both sides right Ogunquin so it might be tending to the right here but yeah. they have options to the left let's uh, let's see how this plays out yeah so a different configuration from how uh, Belmont in a similar position to attack it the other the other way so The ball is hooked well, and there's a pickup at number eight. Oh, great counter rocking then. That was unlucky. There wasn't enough players there, but that was good from Belmont. But there's a real tussle going on there. There we go. <laughs> Okay, well, as soon as the ball's on the ground, or at least the player with the ball's knees on the ground, everybody has to let go of that player at that point. Good hat. Well, there's number 16 again, who's been, wow, full of energy since she's been oh, on. And oh, and she got it off as well. She did. Great hand off. There's number yep. 22. Yep. Oh, and that was a good idea. Oh, into touch. That was number seven. Good pick and go around the, around the, uh, around the uh, near side. So I think that was Short Lizzie side. plowing through, right? Number 16, who gave a great handoff to Bella. Yes. In the, he gave a handoff in the tackle. Um, we talked about that last week, the ability to actually transition the ball when you're being tackled to the other player to keep the player the play alive. Great rugby there, and Bella brought that forward. And uh, good defense by Belmont, though. They, they came over, covered well, and uh, forced a line out, actually, where they have the ball. So now here we, here we have our specific... Throw in to a specific catcher. Let's see how they do this. Okay. And that. Oh. Okay, so it's still. Uh, it's touch. Oh, the ref is not giving it, so. So I think there must have been a knock on there, yeah. So a Gun Queen, uh, unfortunately, not that ball on. So now. Steadier platform now for Belmont to. to uh, But I think with that, that was an example of how, you know, how difficult the line out is, right? In, in kind of getting the height, the necessary height at, at the throw the in, timing getting the, the timing throw, right. Yeah. Like it just, it just takes a lot of practice every week on the, on the training field again. So, so let's see how Belmont, uh, people talk about an extra, an, an exit strategy, right, Charlie? That's right. Yeah. So deep in our 22, Belmont, that's the, uh, 
Oh, and good tackling, Algonquin. Good play, actually, by Layla there. She had the nails there not to just throw the ball away and keep it with her, right? Set up again. But Algonquin have stolen the ball now. Yep. And trying to keep the ball alive, Charlie. Yep. Oh, that was well played. The Belmont there seeing no ruck had formed actually there, right, Charlie? Nobody yeah. was nobody was over the top of the ball to protect it. And uh, oh, and here's a kick there. Good. Oh, a oh. take. A good tackle. Yes. Not on the tackle. Oh. That was Sadie that Taylor was Sadie. on her opposite number there. So the fullback, good for her, the fullback number 15. Very excited with that take because other than that, in the first half, she got run over. And made some good tackles against the Belmont players, and now she had a chance to actually uh, catch the ball and, uh, and run it back towards Belmont. So, That's Gabby, Gabby Lamudo there from Algonquin. Yeah, that Great was play, Gabby. Okay, another line out. Ever since we mentioned line outs, Charlie, we're going to get a lot of them right in front of the camera now. So, Belmont with another one here. So, he has f this is a four person line out, right? Four player. Belmont have four players in there. That's right. Yeah, but nice moves. You see how they swapped out there? That was good. So why was that just knocked forward, I think, in the as they tried yep. to catch it? They just went forward a little? Yeah, so now uh, the choice there is given to Algonquin there, what they want to do at that point. So they chose to uh, take, the, take the line out again. They could have taken a scrum, I think, right at that point while well, that was a knock-on, an infringement in the line out. Nice. Go for it. Oh, yes. That was a good... Bit of a sneaky trick play yes. there, wasn't it? <laughs> Number seven there, Julia, with pick up and moving forward. Oh, great tackle great there. Great tackle. Oh, my gosh. That's solid that defense. Was, uh, that was really good. It's good for Belmont to have this uh, test as well, right? I mean... Uh, no, not a lot of fun defending on your own 22, but very satisfying, right, when you're able to keep the ball out. Algonquin have numbers outside. But Belmont have stolen that ball, Charlie. That's, That's great. great. Yeah, very good. Well, organ good organized, not committing too much in, getting the tackles in when they need it. Oh, looks like they've... It's bouncing around there. Yeah, I think. Uh, okay, the ref. Oh, okay. So it's uh, scrum two. Algonquin. Good attacking position here. I think Belmont must have just knocked that forward in the in yeah, the rock as they went to ground. I think it just popped out. Um, yes, very good attacking position. So let's see what happens here. So Belmont have the advantage here that uh, we're so close to our try line. You see the players lined up on it. They're not. They no longer have to be five five uh, meters back from the back foot of the scrum. They can come up to the try line itself to help defend. So it does give the defending team in this instance a bit of an advantage. Pick up at number eight. Yeah, good anticipation there. I think that was Layla with the tackle. Yeah, was it? Very it good. Yeah, that was great. She knew that that was going to happen, but. Pressure told, Algonquin over for another score. Well deserved. Yeah, that was a good passage play, keeping the ball alive, as you've mentioned, Charlie, in there, making sure they don't uh, spill it or knock it forward and keep it alive for their compadres. I wonder who scored that one for uh, oh, you can't see Algonquin. There's a, there's a light in there. Yeah, I didn't see that. I think it was somewhere, one of the forwards in the, kind of coming out of the scrum that happened. They just picked it up in the ruck and, and, and drove over, dived over, maybe a yard or two they had left, and uh, it was a good opportunistic try. Number 12 it's has got over. the kick. Well done. Yes. Good. That was the number 12? That was Taylor. Taylor Dwayne. Great job. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, Coming up towards uh, 60 minutes now, so probably about 10 or 12 or 13 minutes left.
So, Belmont now with the restart. So, uh, let's see where this kick goes. Uh, Rebecca with the restart. How was the how was the boys' game earlier, David? I missed it. Was it? Uh, did you it see much of it? Uh, I I saw barely. I saw the uh, second uh, fifteen encounter, um, which was a very tight game. This was against Sinsbury, a visiting team from Connecticut, and the boys uh, ran in a similar score to this one. Okay. Belmont wanting to get that ball. Yes. Nope. Ah, yes. Unlucky. Held it holding on. Oh, no. Okay. Lucky I, I didn't ref that one. I thought uh, Agunquin were holding on. But, oh, nice adventuresome play. Not 10. So Belmont have got to get 10 meters back. Any team has got to get 10 meters back. So when the... Uh, oh, Charlie, we just got uh, two trains going by at the same time. That's... Uh, <laughs> Good tackle from Belmont. Dominant tackle, I think they call that, right, Charlie? Where you push the person, push the player back. That's right. Not something that I contributed to, other than being the player tackled. <laughs> but, so Gunquin, so with the one, I bet this is 16 again. Yeah, gosh, okay, the ball being called back. So that must have been a, a knock-on, so a scrum. Yeah, forward pass there. What was that lucky? Scrum now. Scrum to uh, Belmont. And we're seeing some more uh, continuous rotations of uh, substitutions now. I notice uh, Lulu Conroy is back on the field. I think... Uh, Yes, I think uh, Shays, I think it's uh, maybe taken a bit of a knock. Number three, was that Shay? I think so. Yeah. Three, I think, was Carly Gordon. Oh, right? no, that's Carly Gordon. Yes, yeah, sorry, she came on uh, She came on afterwards. Yep. Nice. Oh, good. Yep. Sadie. Oh, good pickup, good Chloe pick up. Ellis. Yeah. And... and Perfectly presented the ball back there. But you see that? Gretchen, lovely. Oh, Charlie. The offload. That was off the offload with the, with the wrong hand kind of thing. My that favorite was, move. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, it skirts out the ball. It does. Let's see if we can get this out. There's the ruck forming it, stepping over. That yeah. person's number offside, six number offside. six, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the referee agrees with this, Charlie. Yeah. Nice ball. Nice. Oh, well played. Oh, gosh, Sadie what Taylor with a great pass and what a tackle. Was that was our number 16 again. A great tackle. Ah. Okay, but uh, referee still playing advantage there from another infringement. It's Lulu Conroy with a big drive forward. Forms the ruck. Layla spins it out. Oh. Okay, so now advantage is swapped to Ogunquin now, so. So should he not call that back for the actual I infringement, right? Maybe. Or just let so. the ball run it's at this it's point. It's difficult to say. I, I, yeah, that's... Belmont made 20 yards from the original infringement, so... So they had gained I their advantage and then the ref said you've done it. And yeah, yeah, fair enough. Often what happens, I guess, is in your own mind, the ref decides that the advantage is over and then almost immediately, like there's a knock-on and then you can't rescind the advantage then, but... It's the rub of the, uh, the rub of the play, I guess. I will say, for all the, the love and affection I have for the game, the advantage rule is one I wish they would tighten up. It, 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 it seems to be too arbitrary to the discretion of the ref. And it does. Um, maybe it does. I just don't understand it enough, but I think it's, uh, it would yeah. be great if they said, you know, if you have it for 20 seconds or 30 That's seconds it. after yeah. the infringement, it's over. Yeah, no, absolutely. Rebecca, oh, good, nice. good handling. It's Sadie there. Going right back in, you know, keeping the ball, moving forward, yes. staying on her feet. Look at that. Ten taking, yards. Uh, taking about seven or eight of Dunquin players yeah. with her. <laughs> okay, lovely layup. Lulu Conroy, Lulu Conroy with the ball. Oh, burst of speed. 
We practiced Oof. that in the kitchen this week. <laughs> Gretchen with the ball. It's nice that. Oh, was that a ball. pass back or a little knock? Yeah, no, it, uh, it looked like it, the ref was right there. Yeah. So it uh, definitely came. Nice that somebody came in. Somebody stepped in. Do you see to pick up that ball? Number 20, I think. I do think they were offside. I think the ref's arm is out for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah he's, he'll uh, call up now. So it's a penalty uh, to Belmont offside. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I think Rebecca's going to kick the ball to touch again here. Yep, well played. So we have a, another line out, this time to Belmont on the uh, around the 20 yard mark. What a beautiful evening. Hmm? I was just thinking the same thing, Charlie. That's it. Uh, it's easy for us, though, sitting here, not, not running around for 80 minutes in 80 degree heat. I'm sure it's very hot for those young athletes out there, but. It's certainly great to watch it in this. It certainly this is. Oh, okay, so that, oh, okay, so it was an infringement of the lineout because now it's the ball, a gun queen have chosen to put the ball in and Belmont steal it. That's good awareness there. Yes. Gretchen again, the runner, setting the ball up. Oh, unlucky Sadie, that was... Uh, Oh, oh! Somebody, uh, yeah. I think uh, somebody accidentally caught one in the. Uh, Stop. Just like a. Uh, no, yes, I, I heard the slap. I think oh. they, as they were trying to wrestle for the ball, just as the referee blew the whistle, somebody's hand came off it, and so uh, a hand flew up Stop. Uh, Stop and. The clock. Uh, and managed to uh, yeah, no big deal. clobber the other player. Oh dear. Yeah. Very accidental, of course, but hopefully she is okay. So into the last uh, five minutes of uh, play here. She's good. That's great. Well done. She's back right back in the line. Uh, yes. Oh my, Algonquin really, and so Belmont enjoyed this uh, second half. A lot of different players on the field from the first half, but uh, everybody seems to have had a great time out there. Number 15 for Algonquin has had a well-earned rest. She's come off the field. And uh, this must be a... I was going to say Belmont put in, but uh, was that a... a Perhaps I'm remembering it differently. So Belmont thought it was our ball as well. But anyway, the ball is coming is going to be put in by Agunquin. Nice hook. And it's 16 with the ball again. Very yeah. tough customer, isn't she? She certainly is, yeah. She stayed on her feet very well there. Broke two or three tackles, stayed on her feet. Could keep going forward. That is great. I love the way the Belmont players are trying to get over the ball. You can see them making a it deliberate is. step. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's still good from Algonquin, but that was a good... Uh, Uh, that was uh, that was good, Charlie. The, the player wondered if she was yeah. in the in, it, it was actually had an illegal play there, but the referee signaled play on, so stopped momentarily. But then everybody started up again. Oh, hit the referee! So as soon as that happens, uh, then the, the referee uh, just calls for a scrummage at the point at which uh, the ball hit. 
and uh, that's a scrum down with the put into the team that was in possession at the time, so that's Agonquin. Much tighter half this half, uh, yeah, which was good. good. Very good for the teams to both have to defend uh, defend their line, attack the other line. It's uh, been a good sort of uh, um, a good session for both teams to kind Very of practice some so. of those skills. Ref here making sure that the uh, giving a good talking to to the front rows on both teams, trying to give them some advice on how best to keep the uh, scrum set. Belmont, no, it's out. Gunquin with the ball and attacking. Good speed there. That's yeah. great. Wow. Okay. I it didn't was see a, who made that tackle, but that was, was a super it was a, tackle. It was, if it's back there on this team, it's one of the tailors. <laughs> <laughs> that was Sadie that time. So yeah. not, not many people are going to get past uh, either of the sisters. But it was a super tackle, so yes. the person charging at full speed uh, to try and take them down by the legs. That was just great oh, work. Oh, a great Look line out. Yeah. Oh, Rebecca. There's your Good. exit strategy. Yes, well played. That was really well worked. So that was, that was classic because she was inside the 22. The ball was only just inside the 22, right, from that line out. And then... Uh, we don't often see it here, but uh, Rebecca used all her nows there to realize that uh, an exit strategy, you can kick the ball up the field and straight out if you kick it and were past it from within your own 22. So that's what she did there. The only downside is the opposition get to put the ball into the line out, but you've made some important line, some important yardage. Gunquin with the short line out there, Charlie. It's worked well for them. They've yeah. done it two or three times this half and uh, yeah. It's uh, it's been been effective. Sixteen again. Oh, she's gonna get through. No, nope. very determined. Okay, they still have the ball. They're gonna held up. They held up. Oh. Oh, yes. She dove over the tackle. Very well oh, done. Good. And well deserved. Yeah. Who is number 16? What's her name there? Oh, yeah, number 16. I think we've uh, mentioned her a few yes, times. Yes, Lizzie. That's Lizzie. Lizzie. We mentioned well done, Lizzie. Well deserved. Uh, great opportunity, opportunistic try there. She made the play, stayed, stayed alert to the ball coming out, and just... Went into the tackle, but moved forward, dove forward over the line to, to secure the points. I think we're right on the end of the, well, yes, referee will always call it, but we're, we're hitting the 70th minute or so, right? Yes, I think the ref will. So this kick might well be the last. This is number one lining up to say this. That's uh, Anna Belleville. Oh, just underneath, Good. unlucky as well. Okay, so we're going to at least have the uh, kickoff by the look of it. The referee hasn't... Uh, Certainly hasn't blown the whistle yet. Can the game end on a try like that? I think it can, can't it? Or does it have to be kicked off again? I think, I, I don't think it has to be kicked off again, does it? I, no. I think it can end like on a, the last play can be a try and a attempted yeah, conversion, it. right? Yeah. And then that can be it, so. Particularly as in all practical times right you're gonna the ball is gonna be kicked from the back to the team 
Oh no, they would have just scored the try. So they may still be behind, I guess, at this point, right? As as this team is. So right. Yeah. We should look that up for next time, Charlie. We will. Can the game end on a try? So. Okay, so that's Belmont advantage at the moment. Must have been a knock-on, I think. So Belmont, though, have come up with the ball, shipping it wide. Okay, so the ref here coming back to the original infringement. So Charlie, here's some advantage. That wasn't too long for you. It wasn't. No, no, that was good. Well refed. We should bring and him he up. made, uh, and you can see here with the lines, it's nice. They made two yards advantage, so he deemed that that was not enough to dispense with the advantage rule. So scrummage to Belmont. Again, an interesting lineup. We're all on this side here. Um, yeah. Yes, that was a, just, just put in before the uh, scrum had formed, yes. And Liv was, so Liv Mann has come back onto the field playing at uh, scrum half now. Tackle. Yeah. Nice there in numbers, Good Belmont. Rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh. Just break through and scratch in. Yeah. Good rock again. Fourth phase right now. Up the. Lovely speed of that, Charlie. The ball coming back. Gretchen again. Oh, oh the ball is lost. Still going. I think there's some tired nice. legs out there now, but good well steal. Yeah. yeah. She still got the ball. Look at that strength. Okay, Belmont up with the ball. Good take in the end. Number 19. Yeah, I think holding on for a little bit. Oh, penalty, yeah. Okay. Do we have a player down? We do. We do. I think that. Uh, a bit dark out here, Charlie. It is, yeah. I think. Jeremy, of course, from Belmont Media has uh, been here all afternoon. Loves rugby, says it's his favorite high school sport. <laughs> What's not to love about it, huh? Exactly. Like another, oh, a leg injury also. Oh, I hope this isn't too serious. Right. So, probably the last penalty of the game. So, uh, probably going to kick this ball to touch and then take the line out and then uh, 
We're going to see what happens. Busy, busy night for the uh, the the medic the team. Medic, yes. So, as always, everything is on hand here to deal with this. Uh, any any injury oh. in play? Oh, quick penalty oh, there. Quick penalty. Good tackle. I mean, quickly up in the line there. That's Abby Hill, right, number twenty. Good tackle. And over the foot. Look at that, Charlie. Come on, get the ball out. Oh. Scoop it out. Oh. Must have been yeah, hands on the ground there, hand. right? Yeah. Oh. oh. It's not what we expected. Not what we expected, no. Okay. Evan Quinn quickly taking the tap penalty. You know, there's a great spirit here, right? By they're Ogunquin, really, they're really like, like they're giving it everything till the very oh, end. That's, so. That could be it now. Yeah, there that we go. That is it. So, a score that was uh, pretty decisive, given over from the first half, and then uh, lots of change in the second half. But what a great game of rugby, Charlie. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, David. And great to uh, be here. Yep. Um, really good and we'll see the games again in the next couple of weeks and you may hear from us and again as always thanks to Belbon uh, Media Jeremy Meserve in particular and uh, thanks very much good night thank you Jerry good night <laughs>